my friends, every year at the end of the year, Stuart and I like to sit down with you and give kind of a recap of where we've been over the past year, some goals, some highs, some lows, wins and losses, and look forward to the coming year. So welcome once again to the Cottage Kitchen and almost welcome to 2024. So every year, we not only like to set big goals for our farm and for our family, but also personal goals as well. And one of my goals for 2024 is to continue and study Italian with Babbel, and I would like to thank them for sponsoring today's video. As we set out with new goals for the coming year, I would like to thank Babbel, one of the top language learning apps in the world, for helping me accomplish mine and sponsoring this video. You can click the link in the video description or scan the QR code to get 60% off your subscription, let me know in the comments which language you've been wanting to learn. As we prepare for our next trip to visit some farms in Sicily this coming spring, I've been working extra hard on practicing Italian so that I can communicate, which makes the experience so much better. Sto imparando molto per il nostro viaggio. Babbel makes it possible for me to practice my Italian at home or on the go any time of day, and their intimate classes are taught by native speakers. You can get 60% off your Babbel subscription by using the link below the video or scanning the QR code. They offer you a 20-day money-back guarantee, and it's proven to help you start speaking a new language in three weeks. So we had this really beautiful moment last night where we were looking for something on YouTube and we were kind of having to scrub through our video archives and before we knew it all of the kids were in our bed and we were watching old videos of the farm together and mm -hmm. oh man it was something wasn't it yes it was uh it was fun and a little hard to watch <laughs> <laughs> hopefully the video quality has gone up in the years that we've been on youtube right i, I mean so. yeah Wow, some of it was very bad. So thank you for those of you who have stuck with us. But I think what really got me is realizing maybe why we're a little tired now because we've spent almost the last nine years, eight years, nine years, completely pouring our lifeblood into this property. Mm -hmm. It's taken so many turns and it's taken so much energy. Mm, it has, yes. and. We've gone through lots of different iterations of what this place needs to be and what we keep here and all those kinds of things. So I think the learning process has been pretty steep at times. <laughs> uh, Again, another year of learning. Yeah. So I'm going to dig through the video archives and clip some in here where you can see some of the different uh, phases that the farm has gone through. So for example, we used to have geese and we did videos on raising pigs mm -hmm. and we don't do that anymore. We've really pared down our animals to the ones that we have found over the years that we like. Yeah. And that we can manage on, on this space, which it itself is, uh, takes some learning. You know, you get to know your land, you get to know what it can manage. Um, and that's been its own process. So, so if you're new here, we farm on just two and a quarter acre right in the middle of Washington state. And on our property now, we have a big flock of laying chickens, some ducks, a dairy cow and her calf, and a, a little herd of Katahdin sheep. So we don't graze all of our animals here on our own property. The sheep go every May to summer pasture and don't return until sometime in October. So they graze at a neighbor's property. The dairy cow we keep here for the time being, and we're still working on getting our pastures established. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of our big goals in the coming year. We're always having to divide our um, land efforts between the vegetable garden, the fruit trees, um, you know, the nut bushes and all these sorts of like foods that continually give to you and the animals. Mm -hmm. It's always yeah. a challenge. And I think every year it's changing.
it's a big division. I think, you know, we've learned where some of the uh, challenges lie, especially with the animals. It's it's keeping pastures green. We live technically in a desert, uh, so so water is a pretty uh, can be a big challenge. Um, we have to bring water in. You know, thankfully we have a great irrigation system throughout the valley, which mm -hmm. is amazing. And modern technology has made that possible. Mm -hmm. uh, but you still have years of drought. You know, mm -hmm. you still have years where um, water's a little thin. And, and our well a couple of years ago um, kind of dried up a little bit and made it difficult to keep the pastures green. So we had to pivot and kind of think through how to manage that, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, thankfully part of the solution was using uh, friends' pastures around as well that mm -hmm. um had some vacant land we could fence it in they had some water and um, that's been a good solution but still wanting to get the pastures here to a better place yeah so that's a big goal for next year yep and that's just one of those things that you always have to do you always have to water here where we live if you don't water it it dies period so water is a massive thing and now we've been here long enough that we're actually having to redo some things. So right. yep. we fenced off our big pasture and it was a great fence, but now after eight years of wear and tear, it needs to be mended. Some of the posts need to be redug. Some of the fencing that calves have gone over or sheep have gone through, it needs to be restrung. So looking into 2024, that's a big goal of ours. We're just actually getting ready to throw seed out on the pasture just to give it a little bit more of a boost come spring. So ideally, we'll just broadcast the seed onto the pasture. The snow will kind of fall, melt in, it'll get into the soil. And then in the spring, we're going to be looking at refencing some pasture. So if you've seen in our videos right now, it's a lot of T-posts, pallets, gate panels. It's not in great shape. And, you know, that's kind of inevitable when you have animals. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're hard on things. They're like kids. We've got a lot of kids. We have a lot of animals, which means a lot of repairs. Mm hmm yeah. And initially, you know, when we set up those fences, uh, we were just trying to get a way to contain animals. Right. But as we've been tending these animals over the several years, we've noticed, OK, we need maybe a few more uh, areas fenced off or like divisions within the fence, within the pasture. Right. Um, ways to kind of be able to rotate them through and, and, and water in one area while they're feeding on another. Right. Those kinds of things. So um, you just you respond to those needs that you r realize um, that need to be put in place. Yep. I suppose. Yep. And uh, that just yeah, that means constantly reassessing and and um, and in this case, you know, kind of redoing some redoing. things. Yeah. 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 I think other than that, really, the only other animal movement that we kind of foresee for 2024 is bringing on some dairy sheep. So our CC girl, our dairy cow, she's pretty old now. She's going on nine, ten. Mm -hmm. She's up there and she's been just an absolute workhorse. But what we have found is that having a cow made a lot of sense when our when our children were really little and they were drinking milk like crazy. Now that they're a little bit older, we don't go through as much milk. And because we're homeschooling and we devote a lot of time to that, we just haven't had quite as much time to devote to the dairy aspect of mm -hmm. things. So making the cheeses that really need to be tended to and doing all the butter and the buttermilk and the yogurt, those are things I love so much, but that I have to be realistic about just living in this modern world where we're a part of a community and we're a part of a homeschool co-op and we have um, activities that take us away from the house sometimes. And we've tried to keep those pair paired back. So our children only do ones that they can do together. They do piano, they do jujitsu together. Um, so I feel like we've tried to keep it really reined in, but you know, this is a really busy stage of kid and we don't have anyone driving yet. So we're kind of the go-to for all that. So anyway, long story short, we're contemplating bringing on some dairy sheep. Um, the kids will be able to learn how to milk them, which I think would be really great. And we keep a ram year round for our meat sheep. And so adding in a few ewes that we could milk from dairy lines would be really easy. It'd be easy to breed them. It would be easy to milk them. They would just get to hang out with the herd that we keep year round. Whereas bringing a bull here is really tricky. We don't have the fencing for it. Finding a bull that you can rent is really tricky. 
taking a dairy cow to a farm that has a bull is really tricky because they're in milk. You need to be able mm -hmm. to milk them. And we have no one around us, not even our vet, that's willing to AI them. So it's been really tricky to to breed the cow. I mean, as simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. So, and if, if the uh, if the goal is to have our own source of dairy um, and we don't have a great way of keeping our cow in milk. Yeah. Right. Um, then you kind of have to think of other solutions. Right. Um, and for so, us, we, lo we love raising sheep mm -hmm. um, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so that's animals. Um, that's what we're looking at for the coming year. The gardens, I'm glad to say, really don't have any major movements. So we put in our big market garden, as we call it, behind our shop three years ago. That was so much work so much work so much shoveling but it's okay it doesn't look great now because there's still a lot of weeds that we didn't get out and a lot of um, vegetables that didn't make it out before the end of the year but on the whole it's worked great mm -hmm. irrigating it has been really simple with drip lines it's been a great location it's shady it's it's just or shady in parts sunny in parts it's just been really perfect for us i've been really happy more produce than than we need so it's met our needs and then some. And what else could you want from a vegetable garden? Mm -hmm. So the only major goal I have for 2024 for the gardens is we put the greenhouse in last year and that was a ton of effort. I've never seen so many screws in my life. Now we need to get it heated because I would really like to move our 13 citrus trees into the greenhouse and have a greenhouse that we could actually grow some greens and some produce from in the winter time mm -hmm. just basic things like spinach or green onions or cilantro or arugula mm -hmm. it's those little small things that make you feel like hey we're still doing it so yeah that's that, my big goal that was the purpose of that greenhouse too right. but as things go you know you, you start on a project and other things uh tend yeah. to 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 become a higher priority right um you and know so, what we said in one of the past videos that i just rewatched. what it's really easy to get the 90% done. Yeah. It takes like 10% of energy to get 90% done and 90% of energy to get the last 10% done. It does seem to be true, <laughs> yes. And especially when you get a project to the point of being able to use it in some way, mm -hmm. even if it's not all the way done, and then you start using that, Right. Um, it that tends to get in the way of you doing the final pieces of it, like, like you know, running power to right. it to, to, to hook the heater up and that kind of thing. So um, that's probably one of those lessons that we should have learned like really early on, uh, which was, we, hey. We did learn it like four years ago yeah. in one of these videos. We yeah, just we just never applied it. Implemented. <laughs> yeah, so. But I mean, there's a tricky balance there because the planning that goes into getting a project like that done com completed can sometimes keep you from starting on it. Yes, uh, absolutely. So if you if you feel like, OK, I don't I don't have everything planned out, then then maybe you you won't get going on it <laughs> right. um, quite yet. So the greenhouse was one of those things where you just wanted to get it going. I did. Um, and which we did. Uh, but we didn't get some of the final pieces done. So that, that needs to be a goal for this year, for sure. Yep. Yeah. Do you think that food production is still our primary goal? That's what it's been in past years. Um, I mean, I think it is in some way, uh, because, you know, we have the gardens and we have our animals and 
uh, yeah, we're, we're still producing quite a bit of food. Yes. Right. So, um, that's a goal. I don't know how, how high it is on the priority list, but yeah. Um, yeah, that's definitely a goal and putting up food. Maybe we're not putting up quite as much, but it, that's one of the things that we found is, um, we've been able to put preserving food, um, all kinds, all manner of things. Um, and it's a lot mm -hmm. more than maybe w what we even need. So uh, I, think I think that kind of comes with experience is knowing what to put up yeah. and then how much to put up. Because mm -hmm. there's no point in putting up 80 quarts of canned beets if no one in your family is going to eat them. Oh, sure. Even if you can grow them. It's just it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So yeah. I think all of that is a bit of a balancing act. And every season it changes a little bit, just like the milk need has changed mm -hmm. since the kids have grown a little bit. So has the vegetable needs. Mm hmm. And I think uh, our own lives have evolved as well, right? And so, you know, there was a time where uh, our work looked much different than it does today. Mm -hmm. um, and especially with you doing a lot of recipe development and um, and cooking for the cooking community, those kinds of things, right. the, the needs have changed a little right. bit. That's a great segue. So for me, I always like to set priority priorities for the year ahead. And the food is top priority to me. I think even since we started our cooking community over five years ago, the quality of food that's out there has just gone down significantly. So to me, it's more important than ever that we produce what we can mm -hmm. from our piece, you know, within reason. Um, obviously, we're not going to be producing coffee beans or olive oil from our property, but there's a lot that we can do. And to me, that that holds priority still because that is our work. We develop recipes. We're working with really incredible. We're working with um, Jovial. We're working with Bona Fortuna. We're developing recipes for our cooking community. So it's a massive part of what we do for work is cook. And the food needs to be good. Otherwise, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. So I always like to remind myself of why we started this in the first place. This all began, all of this began because we had Georgia and we had to kind of ask ourselves, what are we going to feed our baby? Mm -hmm. What do we want to feed her? And here we are 13 years later and we've devoted our lives to this way of life. Mm -hmm. And it's still one that I really love. And I have to remind myself that some days, <laughs> like you chose this, you wanted this. Mm -hmm. I don't think we really could have imagined where we would be all those years ago. No, not at all. And it's funny as you're talking about watching old videos last night. Um, it, it is uh, sort of a stark way of being faced with how far you've come and where you, where you've been. And it's been a long time since I've looked at any of those. And it's it was it's like looking through an old photo album where you're just yeah. like, I can't believe our kids were that age and and, you know, our property looked the way it did. And yeah. All the changes it's been through. It's nostalgic, but it's a bit of a slap in the face too. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, we're getting older. That, but yeah, you just see how, how things change. Yeah. And um, it's happening so subtly and incrementally over the years. Uh, and then you look back just a little ways, you know, 10 years or whatever. Um, and you see, oh, that a lot has happened. A lot has actually changed yep. from, from, from that time. So. so as we look forward to 2024... A few changes, obviously, in the animals, some new fencing, but really it's business as usual mm -hmm. with a heart posture that's really bent towards remembering who we are and why we're doing what we're doing and why we think it has value. And we also mentioned this in a past video, but, you know, devoting ourselves to helping our children to love this life as well. Mm -hmm. And to enjoy good food, to enjoy dirt under their fingernails, to enjoy time spent outside, to enjoy working with their hands. And we don't know who they'll grow up to be or what they'll end up doing in their lives, but as much as we can to give them a foundation of connection to the earth, to people, to family, it's really important. This is just the way that we've chosen to do it. But I think kind of going back to that space and going back to that part and going back to those roots is going to hold a lot of value for us this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and looking back to those things, as much of as things have changed, 
um, I'm actually surprised at how kind of consistent we've been through the years on what our priorities are, what motivates us, um, and what our goals, what our goals are. That's encouraging. Yeah. To, to look back and say, oh, actually, we're kind of still on track. Yeah. <laughs> with we want with our stated goals. Food. Yeah. <laughs> we want to love our people well. Yeah. I mean. And that's what this is all about: is reflecting on that and yeah. and, and and taking an assessment of, yeah. of those things. And uh, that's an important process to go through, mm -hmm. to be reflective about those kinds of things. Of course, correct where you need to, but also realize the things that you have done well mm -hmm. um, and that you can be proud of. So. Yep. Yeah. It's going to be a good year. Yeah. I think. Yes. I agree. Good year. I agree.